Hello, I am Srilata, Chief Clinical Nutritionist from Max Cure Hospitals, Madhapur. Today we will be talking about a diet in high cholesterol. Especially in this modern world, most of us are suffering from high cholesterol. This particular cholesterol is synthesized by our liver every day. When we take more amounts of cholesterol in the diet, the liver will not produce that much of cholesterol as required. So, our recommendation for dietary cholesterol is 250 milligrams per day. This is recommended by American Heart Association. Now, how much of cholesterol are we taking through diet? We don't know. So basically, what are the foods which are rich in cholesterol? We need to understand. So plant-based foods are having no cholesterol. When we find any ad saying that there is no cholesterol in this oil, in peanut oil or sunflower oil, when we see, when we watch programs or ads in the TV, so we need to understand that there is no cholesterol in plant-based oils. So animal foods have cholesterol, especially the red meat, the pork, beef, bacons, hamburgers, all these have high cholesterol content in them itself. Okay, and certain foods are there on their consumption, our body cholesterol will be increased. Foods like your bakery products, your butter, cheese, maida preparations, all deep fried foods and foods where they reuse oil. Like if you take your any oil fried fruits which are sold outside commercially like your bajias, pakoras or samosas where the uh, cook will not use a fresh oil. He keeps on using the same oil which is reused. So the bonds between these oil will break and they are converted into saturated fats. The unsaturated bonds of the oil is converted into saturated. Now if you take more of saturated fatty acids, suppose if a person is traveling from one place to another, in between when he is hungry, he takes some samosas or kachoris or bajia pakoda. So every day he keeps snacking on such an items, over a period of time his body cholesterol will go high. So we need to understand because of the breakage of the unsaturated bond, the fat is converted into saturated and that is what is increasing the cholesterol in the body. So especially when we uh, think or uh, talk about non-veg like red meat which is matured, it has high amounts of cholesterol. So always ideal to choose a lean meat that means the mutton which is very young which has less age and which has less proportion of fat in them. So that should be occasionally taken if the person is having high cholesterol. So we recommend them to take every month around 75 grams and not every week. And likewise, if you consider the organ meats, they are also really high in cholesterol like liver, intestine, brain. Brain has 1100 milligrams of cholesterol. So we need to understand this organ meats contributes to lots of fat, saturated fat as well as cholesterol to the diet. So consumption of these organ meats should be reduced overall when the person has high cholesterol. And also beef and pork also has good amounts of cholesterol. So reduce the quantity and the frequency of consumption of this red meat. And uh, skinless chicken is ideal to consume because most of the fat in the chicken lies in the skin. So 55% of the fat is under the skin. So we have to take a skinless chicken whenever we are taking non-veg. And ideally the recommendation for heart patients and patients who are on the overside of the weight or patients suffering from hypercholesteremia, they have to take around 75 grams of skinless chicken per week. And a red meat or mutton or the other organ meats around 75 grams per month. The frequency should be reduced and the quantity is also lowered. And the same thing if it is a fish that is cardioprotective, that will lower the cholesterol in the body. Fish is really good which is rich in omega-3 fatty acids, especially the fishes which are fed on the deep water planktons. Under the seabed we have certain weeds which have good amounts of omega-3 fatty acids. When the fish eat certain fodder that means the uh, food for the fish by the planktons when they eat such things their flesh is rich in omega-3 fatty acids such are salmon tuna mackerel herring these are really good for us so ideally the american heart association recommends around 300 grams of fish per week 
and we need to understand fish is zero in cholesterol good in fat which is really healthy for us in terms of omega-3 fatty acids but we need to understand that we should not go with fish fry or fish fillets it is like a plain curry wherein you use some spices and condiments or any gravy based vegetable based like your tomato gravy and onion gravy it is not that we add too much of masala paste like your uh, till or uh, groundnut oil or poppy seeds and make it more calorie dense we are looking at cutting down of the fat so using the cooking oil also should be minimized so the recommendation for oil for a hypercholesterolic patient is around 4 teaspoons of oil per day so rotation of oil is very important so as i said you all no oil is same so one oil let's talk about peanut oil it is rich in monounsaturated fatty acid like sunflower it is rich in polyunsaturated fatty acid so we can have a combination of both in our diet like let us use peanut for the breakfast and sunflower for the lunch anything like that two oils should be always ideal but do not mix them mixing up of oil is always allowed it is really bad practice because the boiling point for each oil is different so ideally do not mix the oils and more so the uh, deep uh, water uh, crustaceans what we have like prawns shrimps crops crabs also should be lessened they also we can consume around 100 grams per month something like that because that also is going to increase the cholesterol of the body and eggs which are supposed to be the wholesome food has lots of vitamins and minerals in one particular whole egg we get around 25 important vital nutrients like your minerals trace elements b complex all these nutrients we get especially high biological value protein and good amounts of iron but the yolk has good amounts of cholesterol it is having around 215 milligrams of cholesterol so somebody who is having hypercholesterolemic should be very careful in taking the whole eggs ideal for them is to take one or two whole eggs per week and do not exceed the limit egg whites will not be having any fat it is completely devoid of fat so boiled egg whites are okay with the high cholesterol patients and uh, to reduce the body cholesterol it is always important to have a balanced diet especially a diet with a high fiber fiber is such a component which binds with the body cholesterol and removes out in the motion or stools so especially soluble fiber has this role to play so fruits and vegetables are really important source of soluble fiber green leafy vegetables whole grain cereals millets all these have good amounts of fiber so when we talk about our basic grains what we eat for breakfast lunch and dinner when we are choosing whole grains we have good amounts of fiber in them that's how we will have the control on the cholesterol now when we take a refined carbohydrate or a simple carbohydrate the fiber what we require will not be met by us that is if you take a white bread for your breakfast with butter it has good amounts of saturated fat your cholesterol will go high and maida is certain such a thing which increases the triglycerides it is another type of a blood fat so we need to understand that a refined carbohydrates whatever is prepared with your refined flour like your puffs your pizzas the base of the many of the bakery products will have more amount of refined flour so certain things what i've mentioned is going to increase the cholesterol in a person so it is ideal to take a whole grain cereal it could be idli dosa uttapam pesaratu anything like that or dalia poha whatever it is we should have a serve of vegetable in that or it can be prepared with a whole grain so we get good amounts of fiber likewise for your lunch when we take it could be a roti or brown rice or any type of millet and with large amounts of vegetable and dals it could be a split dal with added greens or it can be a whole gram like your chana rajma chola it should be with a big bowl of salad serving and some buttermilk this makes the diet very balanced complete with all the required nutrients and all the required food groups so this is very 
rich in fiber and is very nutritious likewise the same diet should be taken for the dinner so whatever the fiber we are deficit when we take adequate lunch and dinner this snack snack is most important so choose some sprouts which are really high in fiber or some boiled grams which are really high in fiber and also as protein or some roasted grams like your peas or bengal gram without salt and oil or we can choose some fruits fresh fruits are really good in soluble fiber and we can also take salads as snacks if it is winter we can choose some thick vegetable soups with pureed vegetables or some ragi malt or some boiled plain desi corn instead of choosing the sweet corn we can use the desi variety of corn which has low calories and more of fiber so these are the certain snacks which will keep your cholesterol under control which will improve your muscle mass and maintains your healthy body weight apart from a fiber we need to understand that we require good amounts of calories it should not be on the higher side the adequate amount of calories is most important and protein in a very good amount 1 gram per kg body weight and fiber as i said you for every 1000 kilo calories we should have around 25 grams of fiber and fluids should be adequately taken and we need to burn the calories to mobilize the cholesterol in the body so physical activity is really important for a person so physical activity of 60 minutes every day for 365 days is mandatory we cannot adopt a simple walking if the person is on the higher side of the weight and obese or been immobile for a long time if they are physically active prior to that they can walk or a jog or swim and do any physical activity physical activity will lower the cholesterol though doctor recommends many sort of lipid lowering agents diet exercise will also reduce cholesterol drastically when the limits of the cholesterol is on the higher side then we need to go with the lipid lowering agents like statins so ideally if we have a good balanced diet with high fiber and adequate physical activity then the cholesterol is within the limits in our blood so please cultivate a habit of eating a balanced diet with a healthy exercise pattern thank you